So we went and saw a double feature tonight at the theater. We did. Yeah. And first we saw When Evil Lurks, followed by The Exorcist Believer. Mm -hmm. Which one are we going to talk about first? Exorcist Believer. Let's <laughs> get it out of the way. So, of course, with this being a David Gordon Green film, and after the backlash he received on Halloween Ends, uh, there's quite a bit of controversy surrounding this film right now. People who have pre-decided this is the worst movie ever made without having seen it. <laughs> so if you're here for us to just agree with you and you're looking for people to just, you know, say what you want to hear, you come to the wrong channel. Yeah. Um, anyway, so The Exorcist Believer, a direct sequel to the original film, ignoring the events, but not really. I mean, it does and it doesn't. You can, there's nothing here that, to me, that suggests that, like, three has been ignored or something, right? No. Two has kind of been ignored forever. So, regardless, putting all that aside, as of right now, um, the, the plan was the first one uh, with this one attached. So, okay. Um, we've got these two girls. They go missing. When they come back, they're possessed. Yes. That's all you need to know. Mm -hmm. So, okay, <laughs> this isn't the film's fault, but I will say this out of, out of the gate. I haven't been irked by a trailer mm. like this in a little while. There is deep, deep third act stuff going on in that trailer. And I had feared that, and it was true. You have stuff in the trailer that's from the last five to ten minutes of the yeah. film. It's crazy. And they say something in the trailer that's like a massive reveal yes. for the story being set up. Yeah. I know that they wanted to sell the film, right? And they wanted to show us that, you know, Chris McNeil was in it, that Ellen Burns had come back and, and whatever, and that they were tying it to the other one. They needed to do that, and they needed to show the possessed girls, right? right? And they needed to have them act all crazy and do some of the things to get people in the theater. But man, this film is 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 really hurt by the trailer. It um, reveals a lot. So here's my question to you. Now I know the people who hate this movie and have already hated this movie without even seeing it. I don't really give two shits what they have to say about anything. Um, not that I. If you hated the movie because you went and saw it and you just are not a fan of the movie, cool. That's totally fine. I don't have any issue with that. But predetermined hatred for a film is just as lame as it, it is. Gets. Go see it. Give it a chance, at least. Or don't. But you can't say anything about it. Just be like, I saw the trailer. didn't look like it was for me. So I, I skipped out on it. To yeah. actively trash it when you literally know nothing about it. Because, I, oh, I read, I read the forums on Reddit. Right. So I know what they, what happened in the movie. Don't even. Yeah. Anyways, moving on from that. I hate that this even has to be brought into the review. We have an opinion. You have an opinion. Let's get over it. <laughs> Um, okay, the question. Do you think if David, Gordon's, David Gordon Green's name had been removed from this project, like no one knew he did it, and they were to release this movie, do you think it'd be getting the level of hatred it's currently receiving? No. A hundred percent. No, I think that's a big <laughs> part of it because... I think you could like argue that the film has a somewhat like a generic for an exorcism film plot, but that alone doesn't deserve the amount of like vitriol and hatred that it's getting. I think that that entirely has to do with David Gordon Green's name. The first movie in a planned trilogy that's attached to a property from the past is always safe. Like. Mm. Halloween 2018 is safe. The Force Awakens is safe. They basically make remakes of the original movie and then they build from there. This yeah. is classic. I don't know why anyone would be surprised at this point. Like, oh my God, I can't believe they didn't like totally pull the rug out. But they totally pulled the rug out in Halloween Ends and you hated it. Right. So like, what is it that you want exactly? So that's always been a weird question to me. So, did I like the film? Yes, I did like mm -hmm. the movie. Did I love the movie? No. 
I'm not a big exorcism fan. So I would say the exorcism part of the movie is my least favorite part of the film. And I actually quite enjoyed, if not love, the first 45 minutes to an hour where we're building the relationships. We're building, you know, we're putting all the pieces in place for what's to happen. And you know inevitably where it's going to go. So you're just trying to connect. And David Gordon Green definitely does have a, a, a good way of humanizing his characters yes yeah. and and i will and 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 also in addition to that i think the film looks great i do too it's, it's a it's a really really well shot film we saw this in imax yeah um and it, and it looked great so yeah my big issue i shouldn't say big i don't have a big issue with the movie i think the movie is great and then it becomes kind of a standard exorcism movie has some really cool themes in the end that I'm like, cool, wish we would have went different ways with that. But I think either way they went with it, you're going to piss off this group or yeah. you're going to pick up, piss off this group. Yeah. Right? So if you're like someone super religious or someone who's anti-religion, you're going to be like pissed off. Like one of you is going to be right. pissed off or, you know, whatever. So I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, I, I enjoyed the film. I think that it's a pretty solid exorcism film. I yes. really liked the imagery during the exorcism itself. Mm. I think that there's some really like cool, spooky stuff going on there. Yeah. Um, and I thought that the you know the characters like the father daughter relationships that are set up are compelling and interesting, and I want to know more about them. Yeah. And so I was invested in the characters throughout the throughout the film. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't, I really don't have any like huge complaints with it. It no. just, we saw a movie before that I liked way more. <laughs> so sure. I do think it kind of like skewed me a little bit, but I think it's a good film. Like I, yeah. I really enjoyed it and I'm excited to see like the other films in the trilogy if they get made. They'll get made. So I'm, yeah, I'm not upset at all. I don't really get why people are hating on it because I don't see anything in there that's worth hating. Um, Before someone goes in the comments and starts, you know, typing out a big long explanation of like this movie's anti-God or this movie's anti-abortion or this movie's or whatever, like that always to me, unless it's just blatant as all hell, right? I've seen very few films do this where it's just like, they are straight up telling you their agenda. Yeah. Like, this is this is one of those total projection things for me. Like, yeah. whatever it is you want to interpret this film as, that's going to be your interpretation. Yeah. So if you're somebody who's sensitive to this or that, that's the way you're going to interpret this film. Because I feel like you can interpret this film as anti-God, and yeah. I feel like you can also, you know, do it in the opposite direction. Sure. Right? It just depends on which which areas you want to focus on. So to me, I that's no not here, you know, nor here nor there. I don't even care about any of that aspect. All I care about is the film itself, how I connected with it emotionally. I definitely resonated with it emotionally because in the opening, when the girls go missing, it felt very similar to something like Prisoners, yeah. which I'm a massive fan of right and of course as a father i'm gonna get super you know invested and in, uh, you know tense and all that stuff um yeah i think it's a, i think it's a good movie yeah. I, I think that um it's it's a pretty standard exorcism film in the end mm -hmm. um but I, I i really liked everything leading up to it and i would definitely watch more i i just this isn't my subgenre. yeah right so I already kind of going and going into this. I'm like, well, I'm probably not going to like these aspects because I almost never do. And because I know this is the first film, it's going to be really. Tame. Yeah, it's yeah. going to kind of check the boxes and that's OK. Yeah, that's OK, because here's what I'm going to say right now. All y'all that are saying, oh, this movie was too safe. In the third or second <laughs> or third film, probably crazy. the third film, when they completely change things up yeah, and try something script. completely different, you'll fucking hate it. It's you'll annoying. hate it. And you'll be bashing this thing <laughs> yeah. even harder. You'll be like, well, 
I mean, the first one wasn't so bad now thinking about it. Right. But this one's an abomination and William Friedkin's Ugh. rolling in his grave and yada, yada, yada. I mean, I. it's just not even fun to discuss movies online anymore. Unless you have like a core group of friends like I do on my Sinister Cinema Facebook page. Like I can always go to those guys and we can hate movies and the other one can hate and can love it. And we just get along and it's just fun to discuss it. But just the like anger and just it, it's like someone killed your mother or something. It's it's so insane the level of vitriol, the level of anger that's induced in people over a movie. Like I get it, you like The Exorcist, but like I don't know. There's there's nothing in this film to me personally. It can be for you, and that's fine. But there's not anything that happened in this movie that I'm like, oh my god, yeah, like. This is really risky, and whoa, I can see how these big fans of the franchise are gonna freak out. Yeah, I got watched it, and I was like, There's nothing, it's good, it's fine, it's a good movie. All right, not gonna make my top 10, but no, it's not gonna make my bottom 10 either. No, definitely not, definitely not. It's a shitload better than a lot of movies we watched this year. Yeah, absolutely. This is my 103rd 2023 horror film, and oh, this is better than. 50, 60 of them at least. Yes. So yeah, nowhere it's, near the bottom. But that's that. It's good. It's uh, good as far film. as um, performances, uh, Leslie Odom Jr., who plays our main character, basically the dad. I thought he was fantastic. Yeah, he was great. Um, he's definitely the heart of the film. Mm. The girls are good. The, <sighs> there's always this like problem I have with like kids who are trying to be possessed and evil and sometimes mm. it feels forced. I got it here and there, where mm. there were certain ways the the audio is mixed and the performances and the short bursts of sound and stuff that just felt like, eh, mm. like whatever to me. But that's, you know, it is what it is on that. Um, I thought that Anne Dowd, she's fine. She's just like everything she's in, with, like hereditary and whatever. She's good, yeah. but her character is just... Kind of the same. It's fine. <laughs> um, Ellen Burns, she's good. She's, you know, she's 90. <laughs> and she's, her. I will admit, she feels a tad shoehorned into this just to make it like an exorcist film. Had this not been the exorcist believer right. and you took Chris McNeil's character out and you just did this as, a, as an exorcism movie, all this would definitely be like more guaranteed yeah. um it's living up to the title for sure sure because i've said this before 99 percent of exorcism movies are just a remake of the exorcist because the exorcist basically did everything yeah for the most part you can reinvent it and we're going to talk about a movie next yes that completely reinvents it yeah. so i will say this i'm going to end on this and you can add anything if you'd like after this if you're going to see a movie this week see when evil lurks okay <laughs> if you're already like screw it i'm not touching this thing i hated halloween ends i want david gordon green dead whatever the bullshit go see that yeah that movie rules and everybody needs to give it money yes <laughs> because we need that this movie's gonna make probably 100 plus million dollars yeah and that one's gonna make like 100 grand we yeah. went there, one person in the theater besides us. Yeah. And it's like, guys, if you want, so if you don't want any more exorcist believers, if you don't want the studio to constantly keep going after IP, yeah. if you want original, unique stuff, gotta go support it. Mm -hmm. It's in theaters right now, okay? We changed our entire day to go see that. Yeah, we did. We had this booked at a totally different time in a totally different theater. And all four of us that went to this, we all agreed to go see When Evil Lurks, and we, we completely switched our tickets around, and we did everything we could to make sure that we went and saw that as well. Yeah. And my God, am I glad I did. So yeah. um, this review is going to end on me recommending a different film. <laughs> but I still think if you're a big Exorcist fan, like Exorcism fan, yeah. and you're not someone who's like easily offended by either you know, David Gordon Green or yeah. whatever, you'll be you fine. It. Yeah. yeah, it's it's, it's fine. a good film. Yeah. It's a good film. 
So yeah. that's that. Anything more? No. All right. That's it. Bye. Bye guys.